everyone, my name is Sinead and I recently graduated from the IB in November of 2019 right before the COVID-19 crisis hit and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys the best advice that I can on how to choose a research question and how to choose a topic for your science IAs whether that be physics or chemistry it's basically the same process so yeah let's get right into it so first let me inform you on the three types of IAs that you can actually do. Uh, usually people only think there's one type. No, there's actually three. So there's the hands-on IA where it's you doing a physical experiment in real life. Then there's a the simulation IA where you test a simulation and play along with that or you like try and simulate things for yourself. And the third type of IA that you can do is a database IA where you take data or information already from the internet and you analyze that and try to draw some interesting conclusion from it. Now just because there's three types, that doesn't mean you can't mix them up. So for example, for my physics IA, I did like a mix of a hands-on IA and a simulation IA. When I realized that I could do a simulation IA was the most exciting part for me because oh my god, I hate labs. Like, it's just like the worst place to be in for someone like me, like I hate them. So what you are looking for when you are looking for a topic for your physics or chemistry IA is essentially what you are looking for is, is a research question and an aim and these two go hand in hand. So before I get into the tips and tricks about how to find this research question and aim, first we're gonna go over what that research question and aim should look like. The research question is perhaps one of the most important things in your IAs because it is the question that you are trying to answer throughout your IA. The research question sets the focus and purpose of your entire IA. And the general format of that research question should be how does X affect Y? Where X is your independent variable and Y is your dependent variable. And you are essentially trying to find a relationship between these two. That is really all you are trying to do in this IA. You are trying to establish what the relationship is between this variable and that variable. For example, what is the relationship between temperature and rate of reaction? What is the relationship between mass and velocity? I don't know, no. Uh, what is the relationship between cooking time and calcium content in a fruit? What is the relationship between height of water in a wine glass and its resonant frequency? That is the type of style of research question that you're going to try to look for when you're looking for a topic for your IA. It's too general to just look for like a topic when you're looking for your IA, like oh yeah, I'm going to do something about resonance frequency. You've got to look for that research question and you got to look for what kind of relationship you are going to try and investigate through your research. What you really want to try and do if you want to get those high marks is to not fall for doing a brand comparison. This is where instead of trying to find a relationship between two things, you instead try and compare different objects. You instead try and compare different brands. And by brands, I just mean like, you know, types of vegetables, types of rivers, uh, ball, like different types of balls, different types of things rather than like of actual variable. So for example, a brand comparison would be trying to find the calcium content in different types of vegetables. There's no relationship there. You can turn that into like establishing a relationship by instead of doing like, comparing different vegetables what you could do is compare like cooking time versus calcium content so for example you could put the um paprika into like the oven for 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes and then you can check the calcium content on it for those different periods of time and then that way you are trying to uncover a relationship between the cooking time and the calcium content rather than just comparing the amounts of calcium content in different vegetables essentially what you want to have in your research questions is two variables and a way to string them together the aim is essentially where you describe what you are going to do or your plan is to answer that research question. For example, this is the aim for my chemistry IA. My aim is to determine the relationship between the mass of zinc electrodes over time. This will be done by conducting an electrolysis of zinc electrodes and measuring the mass for the electrodes every two minutes with each trial. In his work on electrolysis, Faraday showed how the amount of metal electroplated is related to the amount of current passing through the circuit. Thus, in this IA, I will also compare my experimental results to the theoretical results predicted using Faraday's laws of electrolysis. So basically in this aim, I sum up how exactly I'm going to answer this research question. If you are doing like a hands-on experiment and a simulation, your aim could be like, in this IA, I aim to first do the hands-on experiment, then to add on top of that, I'm going to do my simulation. You know, like that. It doesn't have to be too complicated, you basically just state what you're going to do. Okay, now that you know what you're going to be looking for, now I'm going to address how you can actually come up with that topic on your own. First, I'm going to address the main problem that lots of people face whilst they're trying to develop a research question. What most people do I see is that they just sit there and try and think of a research question all on their own. They just chill, sit back and think, huh, what I should do. Or better yet, they uh, open a blank page on Word and start like jotting down ideas. 
Now, whilst this can work, uh, I see this as a really ineffective way of trying to develop a research question. What I found the best way is to come up with a research question is to uh, narrow in on a topic that you're interested in and do a lot of research within that topic so that eventually you can stand on the shoulder of giants essentially and come up with your own research question based off actually doing research. <laughs> that is, you want to pick a topic that you're interested in and then look what people have already done within that topic and then see if you can find a way to add nuance to that research. You don't have to do something completely original for your IA. It's perfectly reasonable and even like encouraged that you create an IA that's based off other people's research. But you don't exactly want to copy that person's research. What you want to do is you want to try and find someone else's research and then find a way to build on top of that. So honestly, a great place to look for other IA ideas is to read the further investigation section of other people's IAs. You can also go on Google Scholar and like read research papers and uh, see if they have any further investigation sections there. Because essentially what they say in the further investigation section is that they give suggestions of what other uh, research questions they would explore had they had more time. So for example, I looked at one IA that did the Winkler experiment and found the biological oxygen demand of like different rivers or whatever and saw that in his further investigation section he wanted to try uh, the effect of biological oxygen demand on the salinity of water and so I thought oh maybe I can like use that for my IA I did end up doing it because I didn't have the materials to but I was going to so yeah so yeah you don't really have to be super creative so for example what I ended up doing in my chemistry IA is that I looked at the electrolysis of zinc electrodes and this is because like I read a different IA that was talking about like the electrolysis of copper electrodes and the effect of concentration on the amount of mass dis distributed on like the copper electrode and I thought hey I can do something like just with like another type of electrode so like zinc electrodes and a really good way to add personal engagement is to make is to make it specific to you so you may read some research on for example like the effect of temperature on calcium content so for example what you could do is you could look at the effect of temperature on calcium content of like a vegetable or fruit that's like from your own country doing good research as a scientist does not simply come from just thinking of your own ideas by yourself and then just acting on them doing good research comes from building on top of the work of others so if you can find a way to do that i find that to be really helpful both of my chemistry and physics IAs are heavily based off like the research done by other researchers in which I was able to build on top of those researchers research and add nuance to the situation. So do a lot of research and try and think about how you can add nuance to the situation through your own research. If you take this approach then I'm sure you'll be able to find a research question rather than just try and think of it through your head. You may see an IA that's doing something about zinc but then you say hey maybe I can just do this on copper. It's like that kind of stuff. So essentially what I'm trying to get at is that what most kids try and do is that they try and think of the question first and then they do the research on the topic. So what I'm saying is that what I recommend you to do is do research first in the topic that you are interested in and allow the research question to come naturally from there. For my math IA, I was really interested in fractals, but the question didn't come from me just like thinking about it really hard and then researching it. The research question came from doing a lot of research in the topic, from which eventually a question developed from there. Okay, some final tips and words of advice on what kind of topic you should pick. Uh, the first one is that it's much better to pick a research question that you don't know the answer to. It makes for a much more interesting IA, adds personal engagement, and yeah, it's just like much more impressive. Like for example, my chemistry IA is kind of boring because you basically can like guess what the answer is going to be based off my research question. My physics IA was a lot more interesting because I was investigating a research question which I did not know the answer to. And this can actually spark a lot of like curiosity and drive whilst you're doing your IA because you'll actually be interested to figure out like, oh, what's the answer to this? You know, like try and find something that you like actually need to like do the research to do it in order to figure out what the answer is. That being said, your research question doesn't have to be that complicated. It can really be quite simple. As long as it's a relationship question where, where it's X versus Y, then you can still do well on it. Like my physics IA was hella complicated, but it did pay off in the end as I did get like full marks on that. Alternatively, my chemistry IA was super straightforward, super normal, super simple, and I still got like a seven for it. So if you do a simple IA, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get docked down. It's about how you execute and write up and do the write up for your IA. And that's all I have for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped anyone. If anyone has any questions, please leave them in the comments or you can DM me on Instagram. Good luck with your IAs. And yeah, I'll see you in another video, hopefully. Yeah, we'll see.